Keto has absolutely exploded in popularity over the last year. And because of this, we have seen a lot of low carb products hitting the market. Now, while this may seem like a good thing, and it is in general, a lot of these products that are labeled low carb have hidden ingredients that will actually spike your blood sugar and kick you out of ketosis. In this video, I'm gonna tell you about some of the worst ones I've found so that you can avoid them. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kate. I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, low carb way of eating. I upload new videos every Friday night. I actually also uploaded a bonus video this week, so make sure to check that out as well. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more, make sure to subscribe. So the first products we're gonna look at are some of the ones from the Atkins line. Now Atkins is a little bit of an old school sort of keto diet. It was really low in carbs, but higher in protein than keto is. So when you see Atkins, I don't know about you, but I automatically thought, okay, this is a low carb product. This is a product that is gonna keep me in ketosis. So some of the Atkins products are okay, but some not so much. First one we're gonna look at is the peanut butter cups. These claim to have zero grams of sugar and two grams of carbs. But let's take a look at the ingredients. Ingredient number one is maltitol. And maltitol is a sugar alcohol with a pretty high glycemic index score. So if you think table sugar has a GI score of 60, maltitol syrup has a GI score of 53, and the powder is 36. Compare this to things such as stevia and erythritol, which are both natural sweeteners. Those both have a glycemic index score of zero. When we look at the nutrition label, we see that there are 12 grams of sugar alcohol. So although this might not be exactly equivalent to 12 grams of regular sugar, it's pretty close. All of their chew bars also contain maltitol. So yeah. These foods are not keto. And before I get any hate for saying foods are keto or not keto, I think it's pretty fair to say that if something is labeling itself as low carb and claiming it is zero sugar and therefore claiming that it's not gonna spike your blood sugar, that's misleading. While you may be able to fit this into your macros, overall, I would say skip these. The next one is Smart Sweets. So this is a really, really interesting one. They make sort of chewy candies and they claim to only have 90 calories per bag and roughly three grams of sugar. So I see a lot of keto people posting these and saying they're like a sweet treat while still being keto. <sighs> the marketing for these is so misleading. I have seen a couple people report huge, absolutely huge blood sugar spikes after eating. And I am talking through the roof. Spikes like this are guaranteed to kick you out of ketosis. There's no fitting these into your macros at all. When you look at the ingredients, there is a lot of fiber in them. I'm talking 28 grams. Now, I just wanna do a disclaimer and say I haven't actually tested my own blood sugar after eating these. I haven't been able to find them in Australia. If anyone else has, please let me know in the comments down below. I'd be really interested to hear what your experience is with them. When you look at the ingredients, it's a little bit hard to tell which is the culprit for this blood sugar spike. As far as I can tell, it's the chicory root fiber. Next one is the products from a brand called Carb Killa. You might think, okay, they say low carb. They must be keto. But looking into it a little further, you might have some issues with this. So just like the Atkins products, they contain maltitol. It has a pretty high GI score, so gonna spike your blood sugar. Not really free carbs, so you can just subtract away. And there's 11 grams of it. So that's the main one for being in ketosis. Another thing I wanna note is the number one ingredient in this is vegetable oil, rapeseed oil to be exact. I feel like I talk about this a lot, but these oils are toxic to the body. 
Do not consume them. Even if this wasn't sweetened with maltitol, I would avoid this like the plague because of the vegetable oil. Anyways, you can watch my other videos on that if you want. Next up, we have these Keto Creamers from BPI Sports. Now, they literally say keto on the label and the number one ingredient is sugar. I don't know why anyone would want to use this. <sighs> it's really annoying because people who are just starting keto might see this and be like, oh, a keto product, that's fantastic. I'm gonna use that. <sighs> no, steer clear. And then there's Stevia Dent. So this is a sugar-free chewing gum and it has Stevia in the name so you would assume that it is sweetened with stevia, but again, it contains maltitol. Two grams, so I mean, probably not the end of the world in this case. It's just a little bit annoying that they literally call it stevia dent, and then it's pretty much not sweetened with stevia, only a little, little amount. Okay, you're probably seeing a little bit of a trend now about one common ingredient that is often used in these keto products. So next up we're looking at Carbrite bars. Claim that they have no sugar, but they do have 17 grams of sugar alcohol. And that sugar alcohol is, you guessed it, maltitol. And even worse, it's not the powder, it's the syrup. So if you remember at the start of this video, I said the syrup has a GI score of 53, and the powder was, I think, 30 something. 53. Table sugar is 60. <laughs> you might as well just be having regular sugar. Okay, so now I just wanna talk about a few sort of just general scams, things you should avoid. MCT oil capsules. These are such a scam. They have far less MCTs than if you were to take a teaspoon even of MCT oil. One tablespoon of a regular MCT oil has 15 grams of MCTs, as opposed to one soft gel tablet, which has one gram of MCTs. In other words, you have to take 15 tablets to get the same amount as if you were taking one tablespoon. What is the point? There's no point. So the other thing you wanna avoid is MCT oils with C12. So there are three main strands of MCTs that are usually in MCT oils. They are C8, C10, and C12. If you're using MCT oil, the reason you're doing it is for quick energy, it bypasses the digestive system, goes straight to the liver, turns into ketones, that's why you're taking it. <laughs> but with C12, it actually acts more like a regular fatty acid. So just like fat that you're eating in any other form, it goes through your digestive system, doesn't give you that quick energy, doesn't give you that quick ketone boost. And yeah, a lot of companies will use C12 as a bit of a filler. I don't wanna say a lot, but some companies will. So when you're buying an MCT oil, you wanna look for one that has just C8 and C10. C12 is not gonna kill you, but it's a bit of a ripoff. And the last one is Gatorade Zero. <sighs> it is promoted as being high in electrolytes, but it isn't even. It has 217 milligrams of sodium and only 75 milligrams of potassium. Plus it has artificial sweeteners, which are very questionable, not worth it, steer clear. Now, I'm really sorry if I mentioned one of your favorite keto bars in this video. They're not all bad. There are some good brands out there and I will leave some of my favorites in the description box down below. Overall, the best thing you can do is just eat real food, not rely on bars and supplements. But I do understand that they are convenient, they do taste good, and they do help a lot of people stick to a ketogenic diet. And if you guys know of any brands or products out there that are labeled as keto or low carb that really aren't. Let me know about them in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.